Hello, and welcome to Compadre Learn. In this brief tutorial video, we'll cover the R exercises associated with the lesson Sensitivity and Elasticity Matrices. Let's begin. In this lesson, we'll cover three learning objectives. First, we'll calculate sensitivities and elasticities manually and using the PopBio package. Then, we'll compare elasticities for different transition types. Finally, we'll plot changes in lambda. We'll be using R and RStudio in this exercise, which can be downloaded at the links on your screen. If you're unfamiliar with this software, please visit the links and familiarize yourself before continuing. We'll also be using the R package PopBio, and you'll be prompted to load this package during the lesson. You can download the R code used in this lesson as an R file or PDF directly from the website. You can also follow along on the website itself. As someone who is interested in working with matrix population models, you might be interested in what would happen to the population growth rate, lambda, if one of the vital rates in the matrix changed. For example, you might be interested in what would happen to a population if climate-induced drought lowered adult survival. You might also be interested in how many fledgling birds need to survive per year in order to maintain a 1% growth per year goal. We can answer these types of questions using survival and elasticity matrices. Sensitivity matrices are used to measure the effect of a small absolute change in a transition rate on lambda. For example, if we increase juvenile survival by 0.01, how much will that affect the population growth rate? We can also measure the sensitivity of lambda to change in a particular transition rate. Here, the most sensitive matrix elements produce the largest changes in lambda. From a management perspective, sensitivity analyses can help identify the life history stage that will contribute most to population growth for a species. From an ecological perspective, we can identify the life history attributes that contribute most to an organism's fitness. Elasticity matrices are similar, but here we're measuring the effect of a small proportional change in a transition rate on lambda. For example, if we increase juvenile survival by 1%, how much will that affect population growth? This is important because most often, fecundity rates are measured in different units than survival and growth, and so a 0.01 change in fecundity might actually be a very small change compared to the same absolute change in survival. So elasticities put these different transitions on the same scale by looking at the proportional changes. And because the values in the elasticity matrix are proportional, they should sum to one. Objective one, calculate sensitivities and elasticities. Let's start by loading the PopBio package. For this video, we'll be using the R file provided on the website. If you'd like, you can use matrix population models from Compadre or Comadre in this lesson. But here, we'll create a hypothetical matrix for a giraffe population. To simplify our code later on, we'll rename this matrix MAT. You can view the matrix by typing the name MAT in the console window in the bottom left. In our matrix, you can see the transition rates from calf to subadult and subadult to adult, as well as the survival and fecundity of adult giraffes. To begin calculating the sensitivity and elasticity matrices by hand, we'll start by calculating the left and right eigenvectors, which we'll call W and V. The right eigenvector W is the stable stage distribution, and the left eigenvector V contains the reproductive values. From the left and right eigenvectors, we can calculate the sensitivity matrix, which we'll call SENMAT, and the elasticity matrix, which we'll call EMAT. Note from the formula that the sensitivity matrix involves matrix multiplication, while the elasticity matrix uses the Hadamard product which is a simple element-by-element element multiplication. Remember that because the elasticity matrix is proportional, these values sum to 1. 
we can easily generate sensitivity and elasticity matrices or double check our math using the functions sensitivity and elasticity in the pot bio package. In the sensitivity function, the argument 0 sets sensitivities for unobserved transitions to 0. This is false by default. Objective 2. Compare elasticities for different transition types. Because elasticity values sum to 1, we can sum them across the transition rates for the same type and compare the effects of different types of transitions on lambda. The following assumes the first row of the matrix includes the fecundity values, and stasis and growth transitions are grouped together. You may need to adjust this code if your chosen matrix is set up differently. Here, we'll sum the fecundity, growth, and stasis transitions, and we'll name them sum fec, sum grow, and sum stasis respectively. You can see the values that we calculated in the top right. Now that we've summed the elasticities for the different transition types, we can plot them using a simple pie chart. Remember the values in the elasticity matrix are proportional, so we can see from the figure we created that changes in vital rates categorized as stasis have the greatest effect on population growth rate. Objective 3. Plot changes in lambda. We can also simulate proportional changes in transition rates and calculate the resulting lambdas. This will help to answer questions along the lines of, how much do we need to change transition rate x in order to obtain the desired population growth rate? First, choose the amounts that you wish to change the transition rates. Here, it is set up as multipliers to the transition probability, so that 1.01 .01 indicates a 1% increase in the transition probability. If your matrix is for an increasing population, you may want to simulate reductions in transition rates. Depending on your questions and the specific matrix, you may have to adjust these rates through trial and error. For this example, we'll simulate a 1, 5, and 10% increase in the transition probability. Next, we need to sequentially change each transition probability and calculate the resulting lambda. The following code we've provided for you will create a list with one list object for each different amount of change specified above. Each list object is a matrix containing the resulting lambdas as each transition probabilities change. There are of course other ways to do this, and you can feel free to experiment with your preferred method. Finally, we can plot the resulting lambdas as a function of the changes to the different transition rates. You may need to change the plot limits, legends, colors, etc. as appropriate. Because lambda values tend to be near 1, we've chosen to start the y-axis of the plot at 0 0.8. In the figure we created, the groups on the x-axis are the different transitions in our hypothetical giraffe matrix, and the y-axis is the population growth rate lambda. The different colored bars represent different amounts of change to these transition probabilities. The orange line is the original lambda without changes to the transition rates, and the blue line is lambda equals 1, indicating a stable population. For this example, only a 10% increase in adult survival produces a growing population. This concludes our tutorial video. Find more helpful tutorials like this one at compadre-db.org forward slash learn.